what's up so last uh last week uh yesterday they dropped this little small video of morgana's synergies which uh basically is like tell them hey these cards work together and i think that's cool so i'm assuming that that's what they're going to be doing so they're going to be doing uh a spotlight reveal mechanics synergy so like that's what's going to take up this week right and then the expansion is live on the six so i'm fully expecting uh mordekaiser's little trailer video to come out today so i'm gonna actually record my the, my video of just going over what i think is good with the character we're gonna go just purely pretty much only on shadow owls and noxus the two regions that he's allowed to be in and then if the video drops by that time i'll add it in at the end if it doesn't drop by i'm assuming in like 12 o'clock then um then i'm just gonna release it and then uh, i'll have to add that into my another another video so you guys can see my reaction basically to his level ups because and maybe his voice lines that's really about it so let's do what we did for the elder dragon but talking about mordekaiser because we now have clarification on what deathless does and how mordekaiser actually works big daddy is already here so mordekaiser boom kill up to two allies when you slay another ally revive it so my thing was i thought it might have been tied to the card right so like there are sometimes when it says when you slay or when I slay, uh, but when it says you, I've been told that that means the uh, the player. So me, when I kill him, when I do it. Uh, very similar to uh, like the issue between Evelyn's husk, right? So when Evelyn's husk died, it doesn't count as a slay, right? It, it, it technically doesn't count as a slay because it's dying through itself, not through the player. Right, it's it's almost like up there with the Yu-Gi terminology. If you guys know Yu-Gi-Oh, let me know in the comment section if you not only did you play Yu-Gi-Oh, but do you play recent Yu-Gi-Oh, where something that says once per turn versus this effect can be activated once per turn. There's a difference between that and something saying that it negates the effect and not the activation. And uh, <laughs> it's, oh boy, uh, but I love Yu-Gi-Oh because of that. It's very intricate, and once you understand a deck and you play it, there's no other feeling like it. And I'll say that to the day I die. And then level two. Uh, when he attacks for the rest of the game when you slay a unit Drain one from the enemy nexus now What's weird is that for the rest of the game when you slay a unit that's when I attack so I'm assuming this is an attack uh, 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 stacking thing that I'm putting on Either Mordekaiser or I'm putting on like myself, right? Because uh, it's yeah the player so it would actually be kind of funny, right? So maybe we should keep in mind of challenging and attacking because then it's going to drain one from the enemy nexus that this guy technically is a, is a win con uh, that's how I'm reading it anyway and you know sometimes I could be wrong and maybe they'll show it in the video uh, he attacks and then it stacks and maybe we'll see the stack somewhere then he attacks again then it's draining two and he attacks again uh, and it's when you uh, and then after that each time you slay so you could attack and then just go crazy slaying units and then maybe you're not even caring about attacking after that it's kind of like Hecarim's new level up where pretty much uh, the ephemerals get the boost. He doesn't have to be there, which I still think is a mistake. Then you don't need Hecarim anymore, right? So does does is is this effect tied to Mordekaiser? Does he need to be on the field? Or after you do that, you just start slaying? And since you only have 20 HP, you really don't need to do it that often. And especially because there's a high chance that their HP is not 20 at the by the time this guy comes out anyway. Depending on what deck we're going to build, right? So like I said, we're going to focus on Noxus and Shadow Isles because one, we want to see what do we really what's really good with Mordekaiser where are we running it to are we gonna really want to run it like this or like that uh, I think we got to first decide what is the best region uh, and it's probably gonna be Shadow Isles uh, so that's why I'm gonna go with Noxus first to see if there's any shot is there any shot and I'm not gonna make the same mistake I'm gonna pluck Eternal oh yeah and I'm an idiot I forgot to mention the other part is that how he levels up right 15 plus allies have died. It does not mean that they need to be slayed. So husks do work in this in this situation, right? Allies with five plus power count twice. So we also have to keep that in mind. And I think he is designed to likely be leveled up, right? By be leveled up by the time he comes out. Actually, his play effect will probably level him up, and it's not a skill either. So I'm I think that this these last two slays here uh, are 100 percent meant to be boom. 14 15 boom let's go and uh allies have died and since it's not a slay it could literally just be a bunch of little small minions right so let's keep that in mind i think it's kind of a mistake to look at the champions first because we need to see the cards the cards that are going to synergize with us and i'm just going to pretty much put aside cards that i think are really good 
and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. All right, so this is the Noxian units. I thought I'd break it down by units, then landmarks, then spells, or whatever. So I wanted to go with some cards that have a good death effect, right? That have do something good on, on death. So maybe you don't really care too much about losing the unit, right? You like uh, if he has to come out or the other region that you pair it with, maybe they'll just kill it and revive it in some way, shape or form. So we do have stuff like Reforge. I think that's a good to mention. And then I also wanted to highlight aggro, right? So I took some of the aggro cards that I saw that were in Noxus as a unit and I kind of put them in there. This Arena, the Battlecaster, some of these, uh, 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 buffs buffing of the units will actually bring them into uh, five attack right and uh, also as you're attacking recklessly you might not really need to care about those units and with some of this stuff where is it I think he's a the first one I saw was a three cost boom blade pierce revenant where the blade pierce revenant uh, has a when an ally is revived granted challenger so there are a couple of uh, the units not too many though uh, I thought that there were more I think the majority of them are in shadow isles that actually have to do. I think these are the only two that I saw that gave me the Mordekaiser vibe that was like, oh, this is Mordekaiser's thing. So, oh, sorry, this one too. It's a four cost that is automatically deathless, right? That just has it. So he's gonna die, come back with one HP, and he gets stunned, which sometimes is irrelevant. Uh, and then he's probably gonna die again. <laughs> and guess what? That counts uh, twice for Mordekaiser. So units with natural deathless, especially this one, this is gonna hyper level uh, Mordekaiser, especially if you then revive it again, right? Um, and that's what I'm assuming and actually I don't think that there was anything that said That the deathless uh, stops right? I don't think that it said at least nothing that I saw said because a lot of times they uh, what is it? Um, it's not Yu-Gi-Oh. It's not Yu-Gi-Oh. It's another card game that I would play and uh, It would pretty much say that this thing revives once and then it loses its keyword uh, the second time that it comes out to make sure that you don't abuse uh, th this thing. So if this, if if I wish that they had a thing that just told you what Deathless does, but I'm pretty sure it, you could just keep cycling it. Even if you can't, even if it's not, it's just you don't get one usage out of it. It's still pretty strong. But if it stays on the field, I think that now we will never see uh, the Undying ever again, right? Why run the Undying? We can run this instead. Look, yes, the Undying gets stronger, but this guy can block. Uh, he can't block on the turn that he revives, right? But at the same time, he's gonna keep coming back, right? So I think that that is pretty good. I think that that's like an auto-include if you're going into Noxus with Mordekaiser, right? And then uh, Trifarian Assessor, because a lot of times some of your units are gonna have five attack, especially if de with Deathless, at the very least, you'll probably have someone just sticking around. We also, I wanted to go with the Legion Marauder, right? So it's something that's gonna buff everywhere. So if it dies, if I revive it, if it comes back in any way, shape or form, I think that it's really good to have the Legion Marauder because it's a constant unit that's buffing itself everywhere. Same reason why I threw in the Legion Deserter, maybe whatever we're pairing this also with, maybe that has everywhere buffs too. The other one is obviously Shadow Isle, so we have to think about the Encroaching Mist when we go there. And um, we also have to think about uh, Miss Wraith. I think Miss Wraith is going to be pretty good, uh, especially with Deathless, right? Because it's summons. We're looking for summon effects, right? As well. So, like, I have it onto the spell. Like I said, it is in this region, but this one, Captain Indari constantly coming back. Uh, sounds nuts. Yeah. <laughs> sounds pretty nuts. It actually makes this. I'll probably take this out in Race uh, Flame Splitter because it is a uh, play effect. We're looking mostly for stuff that's going to have immediate effect when it can attack or attack again or multiple times. So this one, attack, grow other attacking units, uh, allies to power to mine. So if we can get this with at least five attack, that's amazing, you know, like that's amazing. Um, and especially if something or one of those other units have deathless or can kill and come back. There's other really cool combos, not the strongest. I just kind of thought I'd put it there because spiders, again, we are naturally paired with shadow owls, right? So sh spiders is a shadow owls thing. This could be an amazing like combo piece, uh, honestly. So same thing with the lost soul. I actually really put this because I wanted to highlight, uh, I think I also put, where is it? Uh, other discards. So I'm thinking of obviously like Scion, right? I'm thinking Scion might be a, a thing I can't find. Here he is, a reborn uh, grenadier, right? So some of these things are gonna come out on the field, and I saw another really good one, which was, I, of course, I think you have to run Trifarian um, Glory Seeker. This one's also amazing. As long as you have another Noxus on the board when it's summoned, it gets it goes to a plus five. Give it Deathless. I think this this thing is uh, absolutely amazing. Um, 
where else is it? Basilisk Rider is another good example because if you're gonna run a heavy Noxus deck, if you're gonna run it, this guy is a 5-4 in the deck and synergizes with a lot of the points. Same thing with Throne of Rose. And it's this card, Ancient Warmonger. If you're running some more discard, uh, then you're at the very least when I'm discarding, grant your strongest ally plus two, allowing you to possibly hit that threshold of five attack. If not, still being pretty good. And then he's a 5-5-5 five, five, five Overwhelm. So he's just a solid bitch and a half so I, I think that that's pretty good i also wanted to mention uh, the the weapon masters right they come out they have a weapon in their hand and a lot of times sometimes the opponent doesn't kill the monster we have mordecai's that i can kill and possibly like i said shout outs just kill give me that weapon bro uh, you got scout <laughs> i need that i'm gonna need some of that all right so i think that that's uh, pretty much most of the uh, cards that i have here snapping uh this card has always been good because whenever it gets blocked, you don't want to block with it necessarily, but whenever it gets blocked, it goes up to five attack, and boom, you usually get like, it helps with the reputation strikes. And since we are doing a bunch of stuff and five attack is somewhat relevant, not too relevant, I don't think you have to work with it too much. I'm gonna put Telsine here just because yes, there are gonna be some attack or support effects that you might like. I think not with this deck really, but I put it in here as an honorable mention. Same thing with Fallen Reckoner. But um, I think we want to uh, definitely keep those things in mind. So, oh yeah, here it is. This is amazing, right? Deathless. When a unit dies, revive it with one HP stun. So if a unit naturally, naturally has deathless, then it's fine. But when a unit comes back, it's not going to have deathless. So like I, so I actually am correct on how I think it's going to work. A deathless unit will ever, will forever have it. But if a unit dies and comes back, it doesn't keep its keywords unless like there's something weird that says that they keep the keywords. So those units that I picked out before, they will actually stay like the this guy in the back. He's going to legitimately keep coming back because he naturally has deathless. I think the only other way that you could do that is like maybe Kaiza could copy it and then all Kaisas have deathless and then she'll never die. So I think that that's how that would work, right? So just a heads up. They did this is I should have pulled this up. I was curious. All right, here are some of the spells. I pointed out a couple of the like random boosting ones like Elixir of Wrath, Brothers Bond, you know, some stuff that you could technically play at burst speed and then possibly team up with the Trifarian, uh, what is it, the, the draw card, or you're using that to force a trade, like give it five attack and it force a trade helps out the level up anyway. I didn't want to mention stuff like that. Salt and Stitch is really good. Discard a card, which you could be this because you can run this card itself. Get the Regenerator, Granadier, boom it's five now and then it dies i do think this card is pretty decent if you want to run that with along with a couple of the noxus cards to kind of help it along and like i said if the card does have a uh effect the some a good summon effect running it with the discards and everything like that should be fine here's a card that i said grant an ally deathless but like i just mentioned if you put this on deathless that unit any unit will come back but it's not going to come back with the keywords it was granted in its first life i should say uh, so that's not gonna it, it, it sounds crazy, but only a pure deathless unit would uh, really benefit And keep coming back and coming back, which is kind of interesting that they didn't give that to Mordekaiser I don't even think his level 2 has it. He just has challenger if I'm not mistaken Legionary charge definitely because depending on how you form the deck if you want to purely just draw uh, Mordekaiser or I used to use it purely just to draw uh, LeBlanc that was like my favorite card. I would just LeBlanc was the only five cost I had boom come into my hand baby boo and then we're good or it does have the upside of growing an ally to five power this round which is going to do the same thing of the other spells that i was just talking about revelous feast for the same thing thorn blade hasn't been relevant ever but uh it could be today <laughs> plus five attack could push lethal could do a lot of things uh so i do think it's a decent card it's a it's, it might be a one-off depending uh but probably not whisper words because I think this is a pseudo reputation deck. You might as well have it in there. Uh, for the glory, I just mentioned it because you get two of these, but why are you paying six mana for a two drop? But at the same time, this is not really six mana. It could be still played on turn three, all right, if you bank the mana. But I don't know how much mana banking you're gonna be doing when you're playing a bunch of units. But thought I'd mention it. Strength in numbers, two Legion Marauders, yes sir for the Legion Marauder stuff that we got. Those are the only real spells that I saw that really kind of synergized with the deck. I maybe could have put Shumpo, um, deal two to an enemy, Rally, Rally's always good. But yeah, most of them didn't seem like too crazy synergy with the deck. I don't think that, I think you're going into Noxus with a different type of game plan. <laughs> uh, if you're trying to utilize this, this is actually not that bad. Maybe I should have put that Challenger, force a really ugly trade, that could be a thing. 
Probably should have put that in there. Same thing with Blood for Blood. I put that in there because literally uh, some of these units uh, you want to play them again or have multiple deathless units out, the ones that are naturally deathless, and then have multiple. You'll always have blockers. <laughs> they'll attack. Sorry, they'll block for you. They'll die. They'll come back with one HP. They're stunned, but who cares? The next round they're attacking. So it, you know what's starting to make me, what I'm starting to realize with the deathless units might be really good for the Elder Dragon, right? I think Elder Dragon, and maybe that's why they gave him that like weird uh, old god skin. Maybe you want to have deathless units for the Elder Dragon so you can block with them on one turn, you can attack with them the next turn, and you really don't care because they're always going to come back unless they're obviously obliterated, right? So interesting, very interesting. All right, let's look at the landmarks. All right, I'm gonna do landmarks and equipments at the same time since there's usually not gonna be too many of them to begin with. So, uh, Dark and Ballista. <laughs> Plus two attack on any unit, uh, rotating for one mana, I think is amazing. Uh, I do think the Crimson Banquet is awesome. Crimson Banquet actually is just, and I, I've been saying how uh, amazing this uh, landmark is. If you guys saw my Temple of True Ice video, you definitely go back and watch that because if you had this on the far, far left, like you play it first and then you play the Temple of True Eyes, they pretty much heal back as long as their uh, their attack is higher, which is, uh, attack is higher than the defense, which is insane. You can play, you can play cards. But what's cool about this, I remember before, is that when this card was played, units would die, and they had a synergy with that one deck with the, uh, the, the Wildfire deck, right? But this one, this one seems pretty cool because if I can lower the cost of a deathless unit I it comes back anyway <laughs> and I play it for less so maybe there's another synergy here I think the Crimson Banquet is definitely gonna be up there uh, and I'm actually uh, just so you guys know I'm saving each one so this is all the units right and then I'm doing all the spells and then I'll, I'll probably do like uh, I guess the champions after going through it maybe the champions will make more sense like I said uh, this one makes no sense having an overwhelm there's no overwhelm for most of the units that i picked so there's that i didn't think the gray apothecary could give you a couple of units for free it will clog your hand though especially if you're playing a bunch but that's what kind of the, the deck was meant to do you always have units to play and i don't know none of the deathless horror five oh, no there are that other one is so you might even get that for free from this card and you could also get the same card multiple times nox crier arena this might be the best time for nox crier arena Deathless units don't give a fuck, <laughs> right? That's kind of the that's kind of the spiel. They don't care. Um, if they'll keep coming back, they'll attack, they'll revive themselves. Uh, since it's round end, they'll die on the round end, and then they'll come back stunned, and then they come back the next turn. And they're able to attack because they're it's already in the thing. This might be the time for Noxfire Arena. <laughs> just just saying. Uh, Trifarian Training Pits, I think, is the same thing. So almost all of the ones, except the Raven Blue. Raven Bloom Conservatory is really useful. Most of the stuff is useful us outside of this one too, right? So I, I think that this is just amazing, right? I think that the landmarks in Noxus almost outweigh some of the units that I picked out, right? I think that that's my big thing because obviously once we go to Shadows, I know about Hollowed, I know about a bunch of that stuff that obviously is going to be great. And I think all of this, if I just click on the standard as well, yeah <laughs> i'm just you could probably run that because i know a lot of you guys are standard monsters so yeah you could probably do some crazy stuff on that i think i think still leblanc is good right i think that especially giving her a deathless she can come back her hp is low so her coming back doesn't make uh makes is perfectly fine riven doesn't make too much sense to me uh outside of the reforging and then possibly giving uh mordekaiser or a better unit all those fun buffs but like i said a deathless unit is not coming back with those other buffs so he will come back just with deathless so i'm, I'm kind of on the fence about riven uh outside of just you'll have a lot of reforges because you're just going to run them in the deck uh let's see rumble awesome awesome right Giving him a, a deathless is great because when you discard up to three cards for him, right? And we already said discard is strong, right? You're going to discard because up for him. Rumbles everywhere get impact, quick attack, and spell shield with the three discards. So when he comes back, he'll still come back as a 5-4 or possibly a 6-5. And uh, sorry, not a 6-5. He'll come back as a 6-1 or a 5-1. And he's going to have all of that stuff built in, right? I think that that's great. I think that that's absolutely good, which I didn't know that his second form has that anyway, which is, why are you discarding in the first place? Probably just to level him up, but still, 
Uh, I think Deathless works really good with uh, Rubble because he comes back with all the stuff since it is an everywhere buff. And then I think we just have Cyan. Uh, Vladimir and Darius don't really make too much sense. Darius making the most sense of the two uh, just because of the fact that it comes, he would come back and if you can't deal with him again, like you can, again, what I like about Deathless or granting Deathless with that one card, only one card really, uh, is you're basically allowing yourself to trade, right? You can, right? And if they don't have a way to remove it the next turn, uh, you just attack with uh, level Darius the next turn. It's pretty nuts. Cyan I, I like because of all the summonings. Uh, the two summons from the actual death list. The discarding. He's coming out leveled. But having two seven cost uh, champions in your deck might be a bit of a problem. Just saying. But I do think that there's... Uh, but you can always discard Cyan. You don't have to use him, right? Uh, you, could, you could easily discard him away. So that's it for Noxus. Let's go over to Shadow Owls. And I'm going to do this... Uh, and I'm doing this because I'm actually going to put these links in. This is what I wanted to do in the Elden Dragon video. I wanted to link these in there. So I will link this in. This is going to be the units. This is going to be the spells. And this is going to be the landmarks, equipments, and champions. All right. I just went through Shadow Isles. And this just too many cards, actually. Um, I'm actually convinced that, and this is going to probably sound nuts, is that you can actually run Mono Shadow Isles because of this man. <laughs> because of this man. I can keep click. There's so much stuff that I can click on. There's so many different avenues that you can make, but I'm just gonna go over a few of the ones that I saw. I think you can run Mono Shadow Isles purely for free with the with what they just added into this region. Shadow Isles, I think. Not only am I correct, I'm correct because I'm a good predictor. I actually now think that another good Elder Dragon deck is Shadow Isles because of Deathless, and since they have a lot of Deathless units in this region. Uh, we only had a couple in, uh, I think it was only two, if I'm looking at it over here on my side, I think they had the Lord Malat, and I feel like that was it, right? And when I went down to Noxus, this is the only one I think that they had a natural, this one, no, okay, two, they have two, they have two over there. Not only are the ones in Shadow Isles just amazingly strong, but it, yeah, it, it's nuts. It's just, <laughs> I just, I don't know what's going on. So one, I wanted to mention that the Ravenous Butcher is great, right? Because if you do have Deathless units out there, especially if you granted a Deathless, you don't lose the unit, right? Uh, which is pretty good. Bolsterous Host, I want to just pick that one out. I don't think I've picked every single Hollowed unit out, but Hollowed has to be mentioned, right? Because it allows you to pretty much boost up the whatever's attacking on the left side, and then boom, it can get five Mordekaisers leveled really, really quickly. Even if you just put these, like a card like this, because it's just a good one drop, it, it, it improves the rest of your attacks. Like, it, it makes the rest of your attacks just better. Just makes them better. Uh, Oblivious Islander. Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> Reduce the cost of a deathless unit. Play it as an ephemeral. It dies. No one cares. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, only a natural, a natural born deathless is good for, right? Uh, I thought about the same thing with this. So, since we're getting more kill spells, I'll definitely mention Kindred later, of course. Uh, this card, I think, is pretty good, too. Uh, especially if you happen to want to give a deathless uh, for whatever reason if you did at least you get two procs out of it is, is pretty much what I wanted to highlight there not too crazy though and then we have the first uh, thing here so shackled ghast right so remember Mordekaiser is looking for a number of things killed it doesn't matter how strong it is so shackled ghast a uh, lot the next time you revive an ally create a copy of me in hand one cost one one it just is a good card, right? So it's just a good card. If something revives, you love it. We love it. I love it. You love it. So it's just a nice, sturdy thing, right? Uh, I just seize the sentry. I'm only putting this because of the pure of the fact that it's just the last breath draw one. You can kill it for free. You don't really care. You're giving it deathless, probably not. But you know, if you need to, I guess if you need that draw two so strongly, maybe so. Same thing with fading icon. Gives you two things to pretty much sacrifice if you need to. 3-1 stat line, a lot of the stuff in Noxus, if you're pairing it with Noxus, well, plus two, boom, it has five, uh, not, uh, Mordecai's loves it, but I just thought of, uh, about it for fodder. Lonely Chime Slime. <laughs> oh, what? What? When an, another ally dies or last breath, uh, when this thing dies, plant four chimes in your deck. This thing is allowing you to buff up the cards in your hand all day, every day. Uh, without Bard, though, you can't buff up the stuff in the on the field. And a lot of times they're going to die and come back anyway, but I just thought it would be interesting because every time a Deathless unit dies, you can play at Chimes and then potentially have a really strong unit in the hand. Yada, yada. Miss Wraith, of course, come on. You can make one Deathless because you need it to be Deathless real quick. Uh, so it comes back and then you can block with this and then it comes back on your attacking turn. 
uh, with more stats because it summoned again. I, I don't. Do I need to explain that? I probably don't. Um, <laughs> Redeem Prodigy for again the hollowed stuff as well. Now Sea Scarab. Hey guys, remember uh, Nox? Not Noxus. Shadow Isles. I think is uh, Maokai, right? Maokai loves this shit. Maokai loves a unit that keeps dying over and over again. And you'll see in a, in a bit that literally there's a unit that heals the Nexus every time he dies. And he's deathless. I actually think that Maokai might come out of the woodworks here because it gives you an alternate win con while basically sitting on your ass. And since all uh, most of these cards that I'm mentioning are Shadows, you can actually still make Bilgewater. This is a huge, definitely a huge buff for the deep deck. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> this is a huge buff for deep, bro. Uh, it makes me uh, think about other things. And, um, and then we have Salter here. Uh, I thought about interesting of a death thing, or I just thought it'd be funny to put Deathless on a husk. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, I've showed this a couple of times. Uh, when you put stuff on husk, it actually um, will go over to that unit, right? So if you weren't able to do it before, and maybe you have a unit that gives out Deathless, I think there's one that puts it in the hand, but let's say you're having the Noxus spell, give it Deathless. And then you play a unit because the other one's burst speed and now that unit now has deathless and will come back and that of course could be a champion so i thought that that would be interesting to note um Cambodian soldier encroaching mist stuff i just wanted to add that in there same thing with the conductor of mist for the ghastly ban again dead wound wanderer maybe you need it to block boom heal for three come back toss again that's toss six just saying kind of stupid <laughs> That's toss six. And remember the other combo was, guess what? Soul Cleave on a Dead Blue Wanderer, toss nine, right? So like it was, uh, well you play it, toss three, get two other copies of it, that's toss nine. That was insane when Soul Cleave came out. Now think about it, you definitely should get one, you get an additional one on top of that, yeah. Sounds pretty nuts. I, again, wanted to mention the spiders, since that were in Shadow Isles, that some of them have really good summon effects as well. And it, this is give other, uh, there, I think there's Grant ones, but yeah. Then we got the Legion of the Severed, right? So grant the Deathless to an ally in hand. So you put it something in hand, the opponent has no idea what it is. You dropped it down and it's like, oh God, I have to kill that twice. <laughs> I have to kill that twice. And keep in mind, uh, when something comes back, I think I still have it here, right? When something comes back with one health, right? If it has anything that has like an everywhere buff, if, if it buffs the defense, it will override that, right? Not override it, but it pretty much is gonna do it anyway. So yeah, like that's gonna be absolutely nuts, right? <laughs> so anything that has the everywhere buff, like the encroaching mist, it's gonna come back. Uh, not that you would put deathless on the encroaching mist, but it was gonna come back and it won't matter. I just wanted to use that as an example, right? So the undying, I think that it's pretty much dead. I don't think you ever need to run the undying ever again in your life, but it is a nice one, maybe as a one-off because it does ramp up. Uh, it's pretty much does the deathless as well as the OG deathless. Maybe you just put it in for uh, as a grandfather clause. You have to put the undying in the deck, but at the same time, um, I think that it's still pretty solid because it actually grows. Now, the reason why I think deathless is better is because it, every unit can block. So I, I, I just wanted to mention why I think that you don't want to run this card anymore. It might be dead. I think it, I think it's pretty much dead. Vora, I already said it. You could, like I said, deathless this or deathless the husk, whatever you want. Dude, ancient crocolith stocks going up off the roof. Uh, if you have a couple of these deathless units, boom, you killed them. You get a 7-7 seven, seven, <laughs> fearsome, and you don't care. Um, <laughs> it's just... What? And like I said, what, what killed this card, I think, before is that if you drew it later, uh, if you drew it early, you might not have the units to sacrifice. Like, you're kind of begging, I don't oh, I don't know if I should sacrifice that. You draw it late, your units are probably really good. You really don't want to sacrifice it, right? But with Deathless, you could literally just kill the unit, right? You don't really care. Uh, you don't really care about it at all, and it's only four costs. So I do think that Ancient Crocolith is going to come out the woodworks because it's going to be really solid. Not to say, obviously, like I said, there's not too many Deathless units, but there are ways to grant Deathless to a unit, and it won't be as bad, right? It won't be as bad. Uh, I think the same thing here with the Astro Fox. Same thing. You could use it on a Deathless unit. You don't care as bad. Uh, same thing with Convalian Dragon. Won't be as bad. Chronicle of Ruin. Get two Deathless units out. Remember, uh, and sometimes I forget about this when I'm reviewing cards. When I see like something like this, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's a great, that's a really amazing card. But I kind of forget that you can run a three of, of that card, right? So you might be able to use that effect multiple times. So Chronicle of Ruin, the same thing. Uh, I could make two Deathless units and then I'm using them as uh, Death Fodder, right? I don't need too many. It's the same thing that we've been doing with the Undying for years, right? Uh, we've been 
killing the undying and then you have two and you can kill two of them and of course when i go to uh the equipment we'll have to we'll talk about that as well right uh spirit leash on a deathless unit that's free not like not free but it's like oh i don't care uh it's it's gonna become if mordekaiser becomes the best champion which i actually think he is the best one he's more uh, i think he has more flexibility i think elder dragon is the lowest i think he's gonna be silly more silly than anything but not with deathless <laughs> he becomes really good uh, but yeah, draw two for free is dots. Wraith Caller, same thing. Allegiance deck, and it comes a Wraith Caller. You can undying this when it's blocking. Then it summons another Miss Wraith because uh, the unit summons another unit. The other unit is not ephemeral, right? It is, or it's not affected by it. So pretty freaking nuts. And here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, are you kidding me? They might have to nerf this card. I'm just telling you guys straight up. Amalgamation of Vile Rights to play. Kill an ally. Last breath. Heal your Nexus too. This is great for uh, deep. This is great for just overall healing all day. You can kill this unit as many times as you want because it keeps freaking coming back. <laughs> it just keeps coming back. It's deathless. It's naturally deathless. It always has deathless. You will actually have to either hush this bitch or you're going to have to obliterate it, right? And currently in the game, there's not too much obliterate. Obliterate is going to maybe have to be, like I said, what do you do when this card comes out? I'm blocking with this every freaking time. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. In an Elder Dragon deck, I'm blocking with this every single time. And guess what? The next turn, I'm attacking with it as well. Then you kill it, it revives, and it gets stunned. If you kill it again, it just comes back again. It's pointless. Um, it's <laughs> it's absolutely pointless. You're it, it's gonna then become the meta if these cards become meta again. It's going to be that you're gonna have to figure try to figure out a way to remove these or, or make them not as crazy, right? Maybe put the curses on them, right? I think that that's kind of what they're leaning towards. Oh, make it immobile, and then it never dies again unless they kill it. But then if I kill it, then I, I think that there's this might be the best package. Mordekaiser's package might be the best that they release just by reading all this stuff, right? Because Elder Dragon's gonna love this guy. He's attacking for five. He's blocking for five. He's he's healing your Nexus up. You're going to have your Nexus good. Hey, boom, Chronicle of Ruin. I make two of these. I'm healing for four. <laughs> and you got to keep blocking them. And it says stun. Now, it, I could be wrong. Maybe maybe it's stunned forever. But then I, I, at that point, I think they should have made it that it's immobile, right? And you at least had to remove it. But stun is one, something that only lasts one round. So, and then, yeah, I don't care if it has one HP. I don't. And I think that's the, the mechanic here is that when an ally is revived here from the Noxus one, right? It, it's Challenger now. I don't care. I'm throwing this thing into there, which it, it's, this is the most undead army zombie shit that I, I love it. It makes sense. I think it's very strong, but it actually makes sense. So, uh, yeah. And that's why I, I, I don't even think I could bother with this unless you have a titanic, uh, undead unit, then it keeps coming that and you're going to keep cursing the strongest enemy with terror. It actually rotates because it's strongest enemy. So after you give it minus three, then it might not be the strongest enemy anymore. Then you have to rotate it and it makes for a fearsome deck, right? Crocolith is fearsome as well. I don't think it really, I don't think you really use it though. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to me to make much sense unless you have like a way to, uh, if you're doing the mystery version, then yes, every mystery you summon is going to curse it and then they can't block. It's a more of an aggro version. Uh, hello? <laughs> hello? <laughs> you guys know what I was talking about before, right? The reason why I was saying that? Because this card exists. Reef of Echoes. For each ally that died this round, grant all allied copies of it everywhere, plus one, plus one. Guess what? Now that thing's saying coming back with one HP, you erase that completely. Um, yeah. <laughs> Maybe even give this guy Deathless once so he doesn't die. Like, you know, but I'm obviously when I say give it Deathless, I'm talking about um, possibly using the Husk mechanic. Or since it does, we do have in this own region, I can give it in a hand. And then when I play it later, it has deathless. So they have to remove it twice, um, which is pretty interesting that if you do kill this, right? And it has deathless, it comes back and it would count itself because it was one of the allies that died. But if you keep having the amalgamation or any of the other deathless units die multiple times, they're going to keep getting plus one, plus one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, spec safety with the Spectral Ironhound. Uh, deathless is great because it's going to summon this twice. Um, which is insane, uh, fearsome unit, and it's a, it's a summons a titanic unit, kind of synergizing with the other thing, kind of, sorta, uh, but not, not too crazy, I think you, I think the issue that you're gonna have is deck space, right, rekindler, it's rekindler, let's be honest here, uh, spectromation, it's spectromation, let's be honest here, scuttlegeist, uh, and again, this is more for me talking about the elder dragon, 
Scuttle guys with this is going to be freaking nuts, right? Because you're gonna, it's, a lot of things are gonna die. It's only a 5-5. Five five. But it, it's probably going to be a very cheap 5-5 five five that you're going to be able to play out the hand, push for lethal, uh, big board. Your other Deathless units alongside this unit is going to be attacking. I am fully convinced that Shadow Owls is with the Elder Dragon. I, I, there's no, you, you couldn't convince me otherwise that this is not the deck that you're running with the Elder Dragon. I, I don't see how you're not running uh, this. Might be the first one. I was going to first try Nora. But Nora was more of a sillier concept, but there's no way. And I haven't even gotten to the spells and landmarks and champions yet. So hold on to your socks. Okay, I was kind of convinced before, but there's no way that I'm not convinced now. Some of these spells with Deathless units are just stupid. And I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, I actually was doing this on purpose. Some of these I put as a three of, because <laughs> I'm like, you're definitely running that card. Um, if you guys didn't know what that means, yeah, you're definitely running this card. Fading Memories on a Deathless unit is stupid. <laughs> it's just it's stupid. You don't care about Ephemeral. You don't. It's going to come back anyway. Uh, I just thought Crawling Cessation, just to mention it, it could give you some spiders. Maybe the early game might be a little bit rough for some of these decks. Most of the Deathless units are a little bit, um, they're like decent cost, mid to like mid cost. So you got to keep that in mind. You're not going to have Deathless right off the bat, right? Same thing with the Mark of the Isles. Deathless unit, you don't care if it dies. Get a good trade, my friend. Go go get that trade that you deserve, right? Shout out uh, Telstones. Mostly I'm just talking this because of the Spirit's Journey. Uh, but it gives you Mark of the Isles. It gives you Spirit's Journey. Kill that unit. Guess what? Revive it. Now you got two. Merry Christmas. And Crumble. Guess what? Kill your kill my unit. That's going to come back anyway. Kill yours. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Yes, sir. Three of, absolutely. Glimpse Beyond, same thing. I should put that as a three of two. Uh, kill a unit, draw two. Who cares? Uh, hate Spike. Kill my unit, comes back anyway. Kill yours, bring a husk. Who cares? It's just, who cares? Uh, thread the Needle. Uh, most of the time, this, this card was so awkward, right? It was so awkward to use it before because pretty much you never wanted to use it on any of your good units. You only wanted to use it on a husk. Uh, sorry, not a husk. You always want to use it on an undying, right? But sometimes you don't draw the Undying, and then you have this card, and it was a useless removal. Now with these cards, you could use this, and you keep your unit, right? It's a two damage, kill this unit, bump, uh, advance Mordekaiser's spell, uh, level up, everything. It's, it's an everything card. These It actually, Deathless units really bring out Shadow Oz. It's insane. It really is insane. Black Spear for that same reason. Death's Grasp. This card makes a lot more sense now. Kill a unit? I don't care. Deal five to any unit. That's including champions. Amazing. Uh, formal invitation. Oh, those units that kept reviving. Let me get a couple of them so I can play them again. You might have board space issues. Uh, that's fair enough to say, but you also might just win the game by then. <laughs> just saying. Uh, fresh offerings. I just, I just thought it was funny. Okay, I just said, hey, there's a chance that that might happen. A bunch of units die on the same thing. You know, I'm just, I gotta mention it. Uh, I gotta mention it. Uh, gluttony. Now, I did look at the 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 five costs that keeps coming, that dying and healing the nexus, right? There is a sixth cost, which is the Iron Hound, the Spectral Iron Hound. I have it over here. I should just bring it over, right? Uh, what is it? The Spectral Iron Hound. So you kill this, right? La Gluttony, and then you can sum it summons this for free. When I'm summoned, then it summons the other thing. That's a pretty strong combo. Uh, but I'm thinking like you could look for other ones. Uh, there's probably a couple other things that have Last Breath uh, that you might want to use that on. But it's just an honorable mention, I think. Uh, and plus, if you have a six cost, I think that that would... No, I think Gluttony does followers, right? Summon a follower. Yeah, yeah, can't do that. Miss Call, you guys know what it is. I had to put the answer in, though. Obliterate all units that were summoned but not play this round. I think that if you're running Shadow Isles, you're going to be forced to run this card. This is a very strong Obliterate. Uh, you easily kill the unit, and you can kill all the units. They all get resummoned, and then, boom, you Obliterate every single unit that they have. They have to start over, or they pretty much GG tap out Surrender. And guess what? You could run this because you're running Shadow Isles as well, so you have the counter to the counter. Now, man, just keep in mind that it does do your units as well, so it's a kamikaze. But, yeah, you have to counter to the counter. Like, like you have the way to stop them from doing it all day and, and vice versa. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, Cleave, I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, you get three copies, they all die, and then they come. Uh, you, now you have three versions of that same unit. Yeah. Uh, you put that on the five-cost unit, you have heal six uh, as you're trading. Yeah. Then you're going to need a bunch of these. Just saying. Talking Shadows, same thing. Splinter Soul. This card, again, a lot of these spells that were kind of okay-ish. Like, we, oh, I'm going to use Splinter Soul on the board in Freljord. And then I'm going to, uh, yeah, yeah, okay, buddy. 
<laughs> you have fun with that. Uh, I got a way better combo here. It's crumple, same thing. Dude, talk to me real quick. Can we talk? Can we talk? <laughs> Can we talk? Now, I don't think it's a great thing because this obviously does your uh, heroes, a lot of your other allies that are um that don't have deathless right but for your deathless units they're going to come out pretty strong on top of that you can then give them deathless possibly in other way shape or form and then they come back but it's just interesting i, I actually don't think you use it because like i said a lot of other units are just going to come out and die but it's a really good aggro it, it, it's and that's how encroaching shadows has always been used it's, it's been for aggro but interesting just thought i'd mention it since i saw it but look at cards like this. Harrowing Return. Revive the strongest dead ally, which could still be on the field at this point. <laughs> uh, and granted ephemeral, and you don't care about that. And fearsome. Awesome. And give enemies uh, minus one. Could actually synergize with the encroaching uh, shadow thing. But this card gets stocks. This, a lot of these um, give it ephemeral is is stocks. It's just pure pure thing. I just put, I put eradication. I, this uh, this uh, doesn't have a, a castigate. Uh, kill all units with three or less. Some of them don't. I've noticed a lot of them don't have crazy attack, and it's probably to prevent that as well. Uh, Ruination. You don't care. And same thing with the Realm of the Death. Now I really see what the Realm of the Death is. You don't care about the other units dying because they're going to come back because they're their homies. They're Mordecai's their homies. You think he cares? Same thing with Harrowing. Harrowing is going to be a, a, a clusterfuck of your board, to be fair. But yeah, same thing. And I just put Auto Devastation for the same reason. You don't care. <laughs> you... You don't care. Uh, you just don't care. So there's so many strong spells. There's probably a couple other ones that I could mention, but I feel like you guys are very smart adults, and I don't think that I have to mention them each each individual one. I, I put I put I put I put out most of the the ones that make the most sense. Yeah, mono mono shadows is here. All right, we are here. So landmarks and equipments, and as like I said, I'll do the champions along in the same wrap up. So dark and halberd, you have to just mention it. You can instantly kill the unit. And give another unit plus two plus two you can kill the deathless unit give something else plus two plus two the other unit comes back awesome haunted tomb awesome right uh threshold of the gray curse an enemy with Terra. when you summon a titanic unit destroy me draw two not bad um the 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 i don't care about the first part really the curse part i, I actually just like the uh when you summon a strong unit later on and summon not play you just get a free draw two so you can kind of just use it as a draw two in the deck uh, amongst your other draw twos that could be potentially if you're putting it with noxus or something like that pretty good malefic spear super easy to use uh with this i don't think you run it though to be completely honest uh so i'm thinking you go with this i skipped over sacred shears eh. it does work but I, I think that you're not running that much hollow now that i've seen the deck a little bit more i don't know how much hollow you're running but you definitely could run it if you're going to run the gwen and the rest of the package and that's the same thing coming with the opium foyer you're, before this, I like this, but it's not really a, a defensive one. It's only for offense, right? You get to bring that one. It's ephemeral. You can attack, but it might be board clutter, right? I, as I've already said, there might be a ton of board clutter here. Uh, so I don't really know. I'm not too sure. The Twisted Tree Line, I think it's still Booty Cakes. No, sorry. Let's say it goes down in cost. Ass. Hell of Regrets is not in this deck. There are some great spells, as I just showed you. But I don't know if you need to be running like this to like get two of them, like two of them. Maybe as a one-off to be cheeky, because you're gonna need space for the vault of frickin' Helia, dude. Kill your most expensive ally to summon an ally from the deck that costs one more. Uh, based off everything I just showed you, I think that that's self-explanatory how strong that is. The problem is the cost. Five costs uh, is a bit hefty, but the problem before with vaults of Helia is that you killed a unit and you got one unit. It was a one-one trade. Instead now. And it actually, uh, it's still round start, right? So you kill a unit, let's say it's deathless, because that's the, that's the premise that I've been going on the entire time. It comes back, it's stunned, you can't use it that round, but it's every round start. So yes, on your, your opponent's turn, um, you have one less, you don't have one less blocker, you still have another blocker, but if this thing is scaled up, uh, let's quickly go over to the units, right? So if it's scaled up properly, there's a potential now you definitely have Ancient Crocolith stocks. You don't even have to kill anything for it because uh, three can go into uh, the four very easily. But once you get one of these Deathless units to come out, um, it can hit the five goes into the six, the six goes into the seven, stuff like that. I, I think that it becomes crazy. And then if you have one of these lower end ones, eventually you're going to hit a Deathless unit. Uh, even if I go to uh, over here, I think they're first, the deathless, oh, this is the spells. Uh, if I go over here, the first one is a, a four. So a three goes into a four. Boom, you have the four. The four comes back every every two seconds. So, and then you, you 
you obviously, if you're running uh, the vaults, you're going to do it in a different uh, manner, right? You're going to have a, a, a certain curve to your deck. So, but I think that the death list makes it pretty easy because you're not really losing too many units. And then eventually, once that stun goes away, you have that unit forever uh, until you want to override it pretty much or until they get obliterated because you're definitely going to have to run passes unearned. Just saying. So let's go now with the champions. Add them into the fray. Callista. Callista is pretty good. I think that uh, she might clog the board a little bit uh, because uh, she, I know that she only does that when they attack and then they go away. So Callista is going to revive the strongest undead unit that you've had, and which could be the five, whatever. It could be things, and then it's going to stack up. So Callista is amazing. Gwen is amazing. Kindred is amazing. Maokai is amazing because I already told you guys it's really good for deep. It's great for tossing, constantly reviving the toss units um over and over and over again or just allowing them to get one more extra summon is pretty damn strong like on the some of those units nocturne not too much Vaga, eh, senna 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 uh most of the spells i think if i look over here i'm just looking off to the side i think most of them are already fast speed so i don't know about any of the slow ones really making a difference outside of possibly like soul cleave uh yeah soul cleave is probably like the only one in the crumple She's not too great, but she is going to like you uh, slaying your own units, right? She definitely, um... Oh, you have to slay them with spells, though. Ah, this is, it's honorable mention. Thresh, I think, is pretty good with it. Hecarim, eh, not really. Uh, Viego absolutely loves it. Mordecai, uh, who's this guy? No, <laughs> Mordecai absolutely love it. Yeah, and, and remember, every time I'm slaying, as I'm slaying, as I'm doing my slay thing... And this man is leveled. We're just dealing. We're draining. It's you're you're losing. You're dying. That's, and that's probably why they didn't give him deathless because it would have been a pain in the ass to kill this man twice. Just saying. <laughs> all right, that's it. We got all of it here, and these are all going to be linked with the timestamp as well. So you guys are going to be able to go through each of these as you want to. One, two, three. One, two, three. Boom. And you guys, let me know. Uh, did I surprise you with any of my my analytics? Were you surprised by anything? Did you like how I broke things down? We got to go through Morgata uh, a little bit later. She's the most easiest, I think, of them because I think it'll, it kind of makes sense. But let's look more in depth of the two regions. Maybe there's more to, more than what we're thinking. But Mordekaiser, Elder Dragon is uh, calling my name. <laughs> calling my name. Uh, but I think Mono Shadow Owls is here, dude. I think Mono Shadow Owls is here. But you could obviously play mostly Mono and then splash in... Uh, just a couple of the spells, right? You just take the Deathless spell here. Maybe you take the Legionary Charge or something like that. You don't have to go crazy, but a majorly mono uh, deck. I definitely don't think you run mono Noxus. I don't think this, that I don't think that works at all. But yeah, I think that it's just oof. The, these cards, the units. There's just so many options here with just the Shadow Isles units. It's insane. It's so insane, dude. Anywho, that's, I'm recording for 50 minutes, and I do still have to edit this down a little bit. 50 minutes, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe if you made it this far in the video. You obviously enjoyed it. So, yes, I will see you guys uh, for more Gianna. I know that's not how you say your name. Shut up.